Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. Tony Hager, Wayne Eric Boyd along the way in a little bit. Global Wrestling News. Welcome to the show. The latest Olympic trials qualifier saw 14 Americans win gold at the Dave Schultz Memorial in Colorado Springs. Greco, we start there. Four U.S. athletes finished first, including the outstanding wrestler, Ray Von Perkins. The 22-year-old returned to action just last Thursday after serving a six-month suspension for a banned diuretic against the U.S. anti-doping policy. In the 66-kilo finals, he had a two-point gut wrench on his way to a 3-0 win over Alejandro Sancho. Now with the victory, Perkins is now fifth in our February Greco-Roman rankings. Should Bryce Sedoris or Ellis Coleman be concerned? Uh, Sedaris, I mean, he had a tough tournament that uh, is agreed by going 0 and 2, but uh, he was up a weight class. Um, I don't, I mean, anytime somebody gets hot in this time of the season, you have to be a little bit worried. But right now, uh, this is their their weight class, and we're just kind of maybe seeing a, a, a rise again of a, a star. Do you remember the last match Perkins had before suspension? I, I had forgotten about it, uh, doing a little research before this uh, show. Um, it was a pin over Ellis Coleman in the World Team Trials with like five or ten seconds left, just body lock right to, straight to his back uh, for the fall. It was pretty impressive. It was very impressive, but so far. All right, men's freestyle. The Americans swept all six divisions on Friday. I want to start with Jason Nets. 10-0 finals, tech ball over B.J. Futrell. I knew Futrell was ready. Super impressive. Well, he comes back. Jason Ness is the guy on the scene now. All the news and buzzes around him. Uh, when we heard that he was going to be competing again, I think all our lives lit up. The wrestling community was excited just because he's got that that Ness funk and he can score from all kinds of positions. He could be a star for the U.S. Uh, at some time. Right now, he's not just ready for that. He's just kind of climbing those ranks and figuring out this style. J.D. Bergman, well, it's been a while since he's been on the mat. He took the 97-kilo title. It was a 10-9 score over J.T. Felix. Bergman is right there at the top five in, in the nation. Uh, agree. Great to see him back on the mat. He's at a tough, tough weight class, though, Sky. I mean, he's got Snyder, Varner, Mahalik, Gatson. I mean, the list goes on at this <laughs> weight class. Looks like a story list of guys. Let's talk about Alan Waters. Four wins, four tech balls, and he made it to the finals without giving up a single point. Outscoring your opponents 47 to 5 in any senior competition is impressive. But, you know, the talent at this weight class, though, just wasn't there. I would say it's really subpar at the Dave Schultz. Unfortunately, a lot of those wrestlers at that weight class are getting prepared for bigger events that are happening this month. All right, and women's freestyle, four Americans, one gold. Bringing the U.S. gold medal count to 14, by the way, if you're keeping track at home. Anyone in that particular lineup impression? 48 kilos, uh, Victoria Anthony, I think this is her tournament. She uh, defeated uh, Clarissa Chun in the final 6-4 again, back-to-back -back years. Uh, she she really uh, is always just seems like she's never given the, the benefit of the doubt to be that gal that can get the job done. She's been r ranked below Clarissa, but she proved it again. That is, is this signal the end of the Clarissa Chun era? It's, I'm starting to get the sense that it might be. Um, you know, this the women's wrestling is just getting more and more competitive, and it's it's really a close race it, from the one to five rankings uh, I see. I mean, there's a couple weight classes that have those clear winners or clear favorites, uh, Marulis, uh, Adeline Gray. I mean, those are the top top girls, but the other weight classes are really up for grabs. Uh, another um, woman that uh, impressed me, Brittany Roberts. She knocked off Force uh, Molinari, four to one in the finals at 69 kilos. Roberts missed all of 2015 with a knee injury. Uh, she was wrestling at 75 kilos though, uh, so this is obviously a, a better weight class for her. So good to see her uh, come back and, and, and impress people and not have to be worried about that knee. All right, the one that got my attention, Catherine Fulp Allen. She got the OW award and a win over the talented Sarah Hildebrand. Yeah, Sarah, uh, she she's a rising star, real young, and uh, this win is impressive for her. Uh, Fulp Allen and the uh, Hildebrandt, uh, you know, they're right in that middle of the pack. Um, but uh, Allen's ability to come back, being down 2-0, and then get two exposure points uh, in the second uh, period twice uh, to get this win. I mean, I think uh, I mean, you can't uh, argue with uh, full Allen. We've got to take a quick time out. You're watching GWN. All right, welcome back. He was once one of the most highly prized wrestlers in the nation. 
The prep level phenom spent one year at Oklahoma State and then transferred to North Carolina as the Cowboys were being investigated for NCAA rules violations. It was there. He won three NCAA crowns, beating the likes of Kerry Collat and Babak Mohamedy of Oregon State. After several years assisting, he took the next step as head coach of Davidson College. After a bad decision and an arrest, he all but disappeared from the wrestling landscape. This week, we catch up with T.J. Jaworski. It's good to have you back, my friend. We have missed you indeed. It's a long way from Oklahoma, isn't it? It is. <laughs> when you left uh, Oklahoma State, the, the, the program was uh, under suspension. Uh, there was some question as to why. They did a lot of digging. They really never found anything, perhaps a travel violation or so, but not enough to end the historical run that was Oklahoma State. You made the decision to leave there and and go to a, a transfer to University of North Carolina. How difficult was that decision for you? Um, well, you know, it's always tough leaving the state that you grew up in. Um, but for me at the time, I'd already used my redshirt year. And, um, and I, you know, I if I wouldn't have transferred, I never would have been a three-time NCAA champion. I would have been who knows what if you don't win the first one. So it was, it was I had to do it for, for me and, and my career your second of your three national titles came in front of a home crowd at carolina how special was that for you to win at carolina wearing the blue well i tell you what it was um it was a, a terrific experience for me you know to be able to win in front of your home crowd and your um you know basically at that point in time you know the dean dome hadn't been open that long and so um it was great for the, you know the sport of wrestling to be there and a basketball, you know, somewhat to say, you know, country. So, yeah, it was it was special. I want to go to your third because I think your third was so very cool. It was a 13-6 final score, Babak Mohamedy of Oregon State. Um, and at 134 pounds, TJ, uh, it, was, it was incredible as you led the Tar Heels to an eighth-place finish at the NCAAs that year. Your, I think then it was their second consecutive top-10 finish. Uh, right. You looked awful good. Well, thank you. Yeah, that was a that was a special one. Just it was a relief, <laughs> and uh, I was glad to get that one over with. That was a season to to behold. Thirty eight and zero. That season, that was your senior year. I mean, if you're going to end it as a competitor, go out on top. Uh, collegiately speaking, anyway, thirty eight and is not a bad way to do it. No, and you know that's funny that you know. Because it's an NCAA tournament. There's so many, you know, guys get upset. Um, I think uh, Marinetti beat McElravey that, that year. And, you know, it's just there's so much pressure. And, and nobody really knows and, unless you're that individual getting ready to wrestle. But, yeah, it was, uh, it was a relief to get that one over with for sure. How, yep. big, how big a part did wrestling play in your life until the, uh, you really stopped uh, coaching and, and started focusing on business and family and all that? Right. Well, I tell you what, I mean, what you're learning at five or or whenever you start and as the process, you really don't know what you've learned until after you're finished with that sport. And I didn't really know, you know, how hard I worked or, you know, how intense I was until I applied that same intensity into the business aspect of what I do now. And, um, yeah, it has it, it really makes things, I'm not going to say easier, but you learned uh, to deal with the, the setbacks of, of, you know, what you may have in, in your uh, in your business. But, um, you know, we've we've really got we're doing well here. And a lot of it is just because of the work ethic that I learned at five, six and through high school and college. Now, everybody has uh, parts of their life and I'm not going to dwell on this, but uh, there was a time in your life that. Not all decisions uh, you made were correct. Uh, sure. Can can you uh, can you talk about that to at least the degree you would like to? Sure. Um, you know, I made a mistake, and um, you know, everything was was eventually expunged uh, from my record. But um, I just made a bad decision, and um, really uh, cast a huge shadow on me as a person, and um, you know with some friends at the time and um you know it was, a, it was a learning experience for me um and it was you know i was terribly disappointed for my dad and my parents and um all my family and friends um but 
you know, I, it took a while and, um, but I've, I've climbed back up on, you know, and doing well. So TJ, thanks for the time, buddy. I appreciate the opportunity to catch up with guys like you. Hey, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Very, very impressive career indeed. And we are so grateful for the time TJ spent with us. All right, coming up, Wayne Boyd weighs in on the Dave Schultz Memorial on the very morning after his celebration of his 69th birthday. You're watching Global Wrestling News. Stay tuned. In honor of Dave Schultz, we got to keep that up. I've got a bid in to move that to California next year. That could be exciting news. There's nothing happening just yet, but we're going to make the suggestion, which I've already done. So I'm excited about Schultz. I'm excited about Nancy, Dave, USA Wrestling. Uh, everybody's doing their part, but we're now trying to find out who can do what the best. And we're getting closer every day. And Scott, your show, and, and I hate to sound like I'm blowing smoke, but I'm telling you, your show is one of the most important things that happens in wrestling. And fans, if you're not watching, you start watching. If you're not supporting, you start supporting. And the sponsors out there, let's get behind Takedown Television and Global Wrestling News because we're on the move here. We are. Uh, the, Under, move. Armor, I... Under Armour is stepping up. They're involved in the Div Division One duels. I've invited Nike to get involved. I think we all should just still work together. Stop this. I'm trying to beat you because the pie is not big enough. And if everybody's trying to get a big piece of a little pie, nobody benefits, especially our sport. We're so let's let's focus on that, fans. We're talking about the uh, Dave Schultz, the 2016 edition of the Dave Schultz Memorial. The article written by Gary Abbott perhaps is the most inclusive uh, in total, 14 athletes added to the field in late January for the Olympic team trials in Iowa City. It'll take place April 9th through the 10th, and that's what Wayne's so excited about. I want to, in particular, focus on a couple Titan Mercury Wrestling Club athletes, Kale Byers mm -hmm. out of Stillwater. And then, of course, uh, we have Matt Mulliners out of Lincoln, Nebraska, and Titan Mercury uh, guy, as well as Tyrell Fortune. What is the real Tyrell Fortune story? He, he made the, uh, the Olympic trials in Greco-Roman at 1.30. Well, I'll tell you, Tyrell Fortune, a very talented athlete. Uh, it seems like every time I turn around, there's something, something. It's just, I don't want to call it bad luck. I don't want to call it lack of preparation. But he fell ill at the Schultz. He wrestled in the Greco. I had him go in Greco for hand fighting. And then I wanted to see him in freestyle. I know he's never lost to Mueller's, but he could not participate. We're hoping to get him healthy in shape and ready to make the Olympic team. Mjolnir's did a great job, steps in, wins points for Titan Mercury. Uh, Byers had to fight very hard to take third. He, he's the top placing American because the other two Americans are placed ahead of him had already placed. So he's now qualified for the trials in April. And, and then Trotman, uh, you know, Trotman's one of the best 86 kilo guys in the country, but we're so strong there now with Taylor and Dake. And, and we got to see what our boy from Michigan comes back. Uh, help me with our, our mullet guy's name. I'm so sorry. I love the guy. He's wonderful. My brain's not working. Come on. Jake <laughs> Herbert, the mighty mullet man. Yes. Jake Herbert. Herbert, forgive me. You know you're one of the best guys in the country. Can he rally and really show up in April? I, very interesting. All the weights. Very interesting. So Trotman does a great job, gets in there. I'm happy that Titan Mercury won its fourth consecutive team championship over Sunkist and New York AC. And we also won the women's division over Sunkist, New York AC. So kudos to Titan Mercury. Thanks for everybody's support out there. We're working hard to create the best wrestling team in the world called United States Wrestling. I got to get it done. As I see it with Wayne Boyd, the conversation will continue on next week's show. Wayne, happy birthday to you. Thanks for this edition of As I See It. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks so much, Scott. Love you. Happy birthday, Wayne, and thank you to Under Armour for throwing a very special birthday bash. 
All right, some accomplished freestyle wrestlers make their return to the mats. We'll have that news on the other side of this. Time out. After winning a junior world title this last summer, we learned that Spencer Lee had actually suffered a shoulder injury around the time of that event, and it would sideline him for a significant portion of this last season. Well, guess what? He's back. The Strip Matters tweeted out on Tuesday that he is indeed back, cleared, and ready to go. The wrestling world has missed him. Never. Spencer Lee, he was already a young star before winning the junior world championship, uh, but you know that really just put him on a whole nother level. Two time. Pennsylvania State champ. Uh, he's one of the top recruits in the nation. Not only does he have freestyle fans, he has a lot of high school, he has a lot of college fans, so they're watching every single move he makes. So, I mean, just a simple tweet from Strip Matter blew up uh, Twitter yesterday. All right, another wrestler made his return to the match this week. It was Travel Delagnev competing for the first time since the U.S. World Team Trials. That was in June, and guess what? He came home from the Paris International with yet another medal. Bronze medal for him. Uh, this weight is not yet qualified for the Olympics. It was great to see him back on the mat, uh, bringing that bronze uh, from the Paris Grand Prix. I, I think uh, he'll have February off, and uh, we'll see Ray on the mat, and he'll be at Medviv in Ukraine. Uh, so those two, you know, you've got to give it to Delagna. I mean, this is his spot. Is he the favorite? I, th I think so. I mean, uh, he's got to be, in my eyes, and he always has been. Uh, there's just been uh, some injuries that he's been sidelined with, um, and, and now you know, seeing him back on the, on the mat, I think, gives a lot of U.S. fans uh, some a little extra fuel that, hey, you know, we might have a shot here. Not that Ray wouldn't give it to us, but we all know what Tur Turvel brings to the table. Well, both of those are huge stories, but is there anything bigger than 2015 world champ Kyle Snyder going down at the Oregon? Snyder, uh, I mean, his, his go-to shot is that low single. We all know it. Um, Holt T of 100% watch film on him. Another thing to note, Snyder is obviously going to classes full-time. He's competing for Ohio State, and, and now we're expecting him to wrestle under the big lights in Russia. I mean, I don't want to make excuses for him, but he's got a lot going on for him. I wouldn't want to be his Penn State opponent to come Ohio State versus Penn State. Time, I'll tell you that. All right, Takedown's domestic rankings came out this week. Does this particular loss affect the weight, or does it offer up any surprises in the overall rankings? I mean, not at all. I mean, he, he really, he's a number one ranked wrestler at this weight class. It, it affects him maybe nationally, but uh, I, I would be shocked if I don't see them actually change the rankings up in the UWW. I mean, the, a lot of these guys that are in the top 10 are going to be competing here in February. Snyder's going to take probably a little bit of time off, obviously compete at the college level. So we'll see if anybody can make a move uh, up that ladder, but uh, right now it's Snyder. What about the women's rankings? Yeah, I think we learned a lot from those special wrestle-offs in Iowa City a couple weeks ago. Randy Miller dropping down to 69 kilograms. Uh, but Tamara Mensa, uh, she takes a hold of that top spot. She is a, a star for Titan Mercury Wrestling Club. Continues to uh, you know just impress people at that weight class. And uh, Randy Miller's right there too with her, but uh, got to give it to, to Tamara. Rankings will definitely shake up. It'll be a little bit clearer after this month. Senior level athletes are gearing up for their Olympic run. Because this weekend, the U.S. has wrestlers going to Turkey and Hungary. Both of those are going to be great trips. Great event to see our top freestyle and Greco athletes. Jordan Burroughs makes his return to the mat since the World Championships. We get to see James Green at 65 kilograms. Uh, with Greco, two-time world bronze medalist Andy Bizek is going to be competing. Spencer Mango. You know, we're going to see all these guys uh, over overseas for the first time in a while. It's going to be a great weekend for sure. We'll have news on that in the coming weeks as well. As the news on the Ukrainian Memorial International, it features the likes of Logan Stieber, Aaron Pico, David Taylor, and Wynn Mahalik. Now, you think any time you get to see Tide Mercury's Aaron Pico is pretty special? I mean, this guy has had the most interest around him, you know, since he decided to get out of high school wrestling, not go to the college level right. So uh, he's got a ton of expectations on those shoulders. So uh, U.S. fans alike just want to see him wrestle and see what he can do. All right, two of USA Wrestling's busiest athletes have been nominated for the U.S. Olympic Committee's Best of January Awards, recognizing the top Olympic athlete of the month of January. Now, the wrestling nominees, three-time world champ Adeline Gray in the women's division and 2012 Olympic champ Jake Varner. Gray brought home a gold medal from the Olympic test event in Rio. She had rematches with uh, her 2014-2015 World Championship uh, 
title bout, and, and she also beat her longtime rival, Erica Weave from Canada. You know, talk about a tough run for a test event. The runner won silver, if you recall, 97 kilos. Yvonne Uregan in Russia. It's easily the toughest international tournament year in, year out. Big confidence booster for the young man at Penn State and worthy of the nomination. Agree or disagree? 100%. I mean, he, even though he didn't come home with a gold medal, anytime you can bring home a medal from uh, Yarigan, I think that is uh, you know, an incredible feat for Americans. Fans, you can vote along with Tony and I and all the rest of the wrestling fans. All you need to do is go to the address you see on your screen. The deadline ends Sunday, February 7th. Well, unlike the USA Awards, only we get to decide who wins the Under Armour Athlete of the Week. Tony, who gets the shirt this week? Alan Waters, 4 Tech Falls, 10-0 shutout against former world team member and 17-5 win in the finals. All right, we're out of time, fans. Executive producer Andrew F. Barr sends his best. Our producer Wayne Boyd celebrating in Las Vegas. For my partner Tony Hager, Brad Johnson, I'm Scott Casper. We'll see you next time right here on Global Wrestling News.